Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. I'm Lizzie with Launchpad and today we have Sally Rogerson joining us from Sally Rogerson Education. We're really excited because she's gonna show us how to create a Michelle Williams inspired hairstyle in time for the Oscars. So let's see what she's gonna do and if you have any questions about what she's doing, let us know and we'll get started. Good, good morning everyone. I'm Sally Rogerson and I have a hair education company called SR Education and I'm so excited to be here this morning to be able to actually share um, you know a haircut that's in time for the Oscars and also in time for the whole awards season and I wanted to do something that was a little bit Michelle Williams inspired because I know that a lot of people come in a lot of clients come in um, if they have shorter hair and use that as you know someone that's influenced them and um, they use that as a reference picture quite a lot. Now it's really funny because it's one of those haircuts that is many different lengths. Some clients come in and say I want something Michelle Williams inspired but recently she's gone through about four different lengths so you definitely have to figure out you know which look is it that she wanted. Um, I know right now she's got it a little longer and very kind of slicked down to the side but you often see her with that more short kind of crop feeling. Um, so you know I think that she is a fashion icon, I think that she's also a hair icon and she's also someone that I think hair stylists and hairdressers really admire because she's very fashion forward so I feel like when people bring that picture in I don't mind you know I'm quite excited if someone brings a picture in of Michelle Williams this is my beautiful model Noel and she is one of my original models from way back so I'm so excited to have her here um, and I'm so excited to cut her hair the first thing that I would do if you were working on a client and the client wanted to have a shorter haircut, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to feel the bone structure because not everyone has a perfect head shape. So that's number one for me. I'm going to feel the occipital bone. I want to see how prominent or how flat somebody is. If someone is a bit flatter, I definitely need to think about, you know, making them a bit more curvy, getting a really, really good profile shape. I also want to think about and look at the full profile. To me, I'm a firm believer that anyone can wear a short haircut as long as you get this profile area correct. Sometimes it's not appropriate to take it all the way up here. Sometimes if you open up too much of this area, it can be a little bit tricky on the jawline. So what I'm looking at when I'm uh, thinking about doing this on a client is, do I need to fill that hair in behind the ear? You can still go quite short, but leave some hair there to make it more flattering on the profile. If someone's a little heavier around the jawline, you kind of need something here. Sometimes you need something here just to kind of help them a little bit. So I think that that's the first thing is feeling the bone structure, looking at the profile and deciding what can you take away and what do you need to bring back and add. The next area I want to feel is the mastoid process. So that bone structure behind the ear, you know, it's a very big area, the mastoid process, but what I'm really looking at is, are they very narrow in the back of their head or do they have strong bone structure at the mastoid process? If they're quite strong here, sometimes they look a little bit wider and flatter across the back of the head. So that again is going to influence if I'm going to do something that curves around a bit more with my sections or can I do something that's more of a vertical section. If you use more of a vertical section, remember the hair is just going to push straight down. So if someone's flat, it can definitely show more of that flatness. If someone is a bit flatter, then I'll probably use more of a curved section to try and give them the impression of having a more curved head. So you have to really think about your sections. Uh, your sections are really your roadmap to take you through the haircut. Also, other things I'm going to be looking at is things like 
facial features, suitability, do I need to take that hair away, does a client need something here, you know, what's going to be the most pretty and attractive for them. Also, I'm looking at hair growth patterns, what's the front hairline like, what's going on in here. If someone has a jumpy hairline here, maybe I'll leave a bit more length and I'll play around with it and do it at the end. One of the biggest things on this haircut for me is the crown. What is the crown situation like? Because we know we're going to do a more shorter textured feel up here. So if the crown's super, super strong, is it going to stand up? Is it going to stick out? Also, how flat is someone here on the crown? Do they need to build something there? Can you follow the head shape? Most people still need a good profile there. You do not want this to go flat because it's not suitable for the profile. So I'm going to definitely try and keep something here. She is a little flat through there. I can feel it with my comb as well and really feel uh, the head shape and that will help me to decide where I need to build weight and uh, possibly if I need to build any corners as well. Okay, so the big thing for me on this haircut is I like to start in the top area. I really feel like this top area is all about getting the correct length for texture, making it sit down, um, but still have that nice bounce and that nice texture to it. I don't want to cut it so short that it's just going to stand straight up. And I don't want to leave it so long where it's just flopping down. I want to create a cool little more textured feeling through there. So for that very reason, I tend to start cutting on the top. Because my big thing is I want to cut this length down and get it correct and make sure this is working before I go into the sides and the back. I don't like sectioning off the top cutting the sides and the back and then crossing my fingers and hoping that the top's going to work out all right. That's way too stressful for me. So I'm going to cut the top area first. The first thing I'm going to do, however, is find the round of the crown and section off that crown area. So I'm going to section off where the crown is springy and also where the head is flat. I'm going to also find the parietal ridge and section off inside that area. So I'm going to end up with like a funny triangle in this back crown area. And I'm just going to put a clip in that. I'm going to get to that later on and I'm going to concern myself with that afterwards. I don't really like to use too many clips on shorter hair because they get in the way, but I feel like I've got to put this one in. It's really important because I'm going to deal with that tricky area afterwards. Now, my first section is going to actually exist on this top area, and I'm going to work from here, not fully pivoting, I'm actually going to move until I get to the end of that triangle. So I'm going to stop there. Uh, I'm also going to feel the parietal ridge on the top, and I need to decide if I want to build a corner there or if I want to follow the curve of the head. If your client has a great head shape and there's no issues or problems, then you can honestly just follow it. If your client has that more pointy head, you get that a lot. And if they're maybe heavier in the jawline, you probably want to build more of a corner through there because that is going to balance and be more suitable for the face. Obviously, I have a beautiful model, so I'm a super, super lucky person right now, and I don't have to worry about that stuff, but I do also know that um, I have to work that crown and make sure that it's, um, you know, good for the profile later on, but I'll do that later on. So, first of all, I'm going to just start through this top area, very simply, uh, I want to show you my finger angle because that's going to be really, really important. And I'm going to keep my fingers very flat through here. Because the head is round, if I come through and go a bit more flat, it does allow me to leave some length through that front area. So lifting this hair up, 
Um, you know, I'm not interested in going crazy short. I want to still have some length through there. Now, depending on the hair density and texture, you can either cut it cleanly. So if you want to see it a little bit more strong, you can cut it cleanly. Or if you prefer, you can come through and point it. So that is your decision to be made. It depends. If you point it, you're probably going to see more of a textured look. If you uh, cut it more cleanly, you'll see it a bit more compact. I would suggest to you that finer hair, you would probably cut it a little bit more cleanly. Uh, Noel's got a, a lot of hair, it's dense and it has a texture to it. So more of a pointing technique is actually better for her hair because it makes it sit down a touch better. I'm now going to come around with my sections and for me, I'm going to follow her head shape. So body position wise, I'm going to simply come around and I'm going to stay on the same side as the side that I'm cutting because I'm not trying to over direct the hair at all. If I was trying to build more of a square shape, then I would stand on the opposite side to the side that I'm cutting. So. If anyone out there knows me, you know I'm a precision cutter, but I know that this is the right choice on this hair density and texture. Um, so I'm actually pointing into it, which is a little unusual for me, but it's absolutely the right thing to do and the right choice on this hair density and texture. She also has it lightened as well, so that adds to that um, extra poofiness, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. It's poofy. We want to say hello to everyone tuning in. Thanks for commenting. Hi, Regina, Tony, Gina, Cassandra. This video will be available for replay if you are with the client. Um, Sally, can you tell us a little bit about your background <coughs> and SR education? Do you want more of my uh, SR education on my personal background? <laughs> I'm only joking. So, um, from my background, you know, I, uh, I got into hair when I was about 16. I was a strange child from, uh, you know, a kind of more rural, small town place. And I find that this is the same story that many hairdressers have. Uh, I knew I wanted to get into some kind of creative profession. I didn't really know what it was. I happened to go to a hair show, and it was a Vidal Sassoon hair show, and um, I just saw all these weird people on stage doing crazy hair, and I was like, I'm in. This is it. I'm doing it. So I went up, asked for a job, and became an apprentice when I was 16, and I worked with the Sassoon organization for about 22 years, first of all in, in the UK. I was one of the creative directors in the schools in London. And then I moved over to LA and I was the senior creative director in the LA Academy. And about five years ago, I actually left and started my own education company called SR Education. And you know, you just get to that point in your life where you think to yourself, am I going to make that step? Am I going to live my dream? My dream was always to actually start an education program that was really supportive to salon stylists. And for me personally, I feel like there's not enough education out there for the commercial um, salon stylist, you know? The bottom line is we all do layered bobs all day. We all do long layers all day. We all do, you know, short textured crops all day. That's what we do in the salon and that should be celebrated. So I have a hair education company that supports salon stylists and I try and really show people how to cut efficiently, uh, quickly within their appointment time, but still modern salon hairdressing. So my background is very precision based, but I would say I have simplified myself and I really, um, you know, I'm all about supporting the salon stylist. If you come to any of my classes, it's all stuff that you can use 
to help you build your clientele, make money, keep your clients happy, all of that good stuff. It does not, however, mean it's basic. I'm a bit of a stickler for body position and sectioning and all that good stuff. So um, for those of you out there, if I know you and you've been to my class, you'll know that. And uh, I just really, really, really love uh, modern salon work. So that's kind of what I do right now with my company. And you have an event coming up this weekend. Can you tell us a little bit? Oh my goodness, do I have an event coming up this weekend, Lizzie? I'll tell you. So this weekend is kind of a big moment for us. And um, we have our very first independent um, hair show coming up. It's in Vegas, of course, but it's in old school downtown Vegas. So if any of you are close to there or you would like to come and see us, we have classes on Sunday and Monday during the day. That's the 26th and the 27th. And then in the evening, we have a hair show. We have a lot of really great artists that are joining us. I have my whole SR Education team. And we also have Charlie Price, who's a really amazing editorial stylist. Uh, I have Mitchell Cantrell, who is just a fantastic editorial stylist and wig maker extraordinaire. And I have Dennis Cooper, who is, a, again, an amazing editorial stylist. We have beautiful hair colorists joining us, Sophie Dale, Kenny Reed, and also Naomi Knights. My amazing team um, of SR Education educators. It's just going to be a good time. I've got to be honest. So... If you want to come to a hair show, go to sallyrogerson.com. You can still buy some tickets and you can just come to the evening event if you would like to. I'm very excited. I'm in Vegas mode already. I would definitely like to talk about what I'm doing at the sides now just to catch everybody up. If you noticed, I started on that top and I stopped where this triangle stopped. So I stopped there. I'm now starting my sides and I started uh, in alignment with that triangle and I'm now going to pivot around like this. And the reason that I started here and I'm working towards the front is because a lot of clients when they come in are not you, but a lot of people are finer in this recession area. And so if you keep going around from the top, you often end up with a hole in here. So if I go this way, I can pull the hair out on its base and come around, but then the last section I can over direct back and it fills in that spot. So that's why I'm starting here. Now also I wanna show you my finger angle. So on this finger angle here, I'm using my guide from the top area and then it's really up to you. You can pull your fingertips out if you want it to be more PC and soft around the ears. You can come in, you can come round and follow the head and take it short down there if you want to. That is your choice. So for me, I'm coming out a little bit on the edges because uh, we're just really into it being a little bit softer in the outlines right now. So that's why I'm coming out with my fingers, but you absolutely could go in and make it tighter. So I'm pivoting around now. And really just taking my guide from the back. Continuing through, the more I point into this, the softer the ends will be. So the deeper I point, the more broken it will be. The less deep I point, if I just do the ends, then it will still be very solid. So I'm probably going to start going in a little deeper because I don't want um, Noel's hair to be super solid. Very excited to be here. Thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate it. I'm super open to questions if uh, anyone wants to ask me anything as well. So if you're just tuning in, again, we're creating Michelle Williams' haircut. She's up for an Oscar, so we're getting ready for the Oscars a little. and just celebrating beauty and glamour of Hollywood. And um, so Gina says, is this cut one or two? 
Uh, Gina, hi Gina, how are you doing? This haircut is inspired by, I know what she's talking about Lizzie, don't worry. <laughs> this, uh, <laughs> this haircut is inspired by um, my comprehensive cutting program. There's 10 haircuts in that program. And uh, this is all online by the way. We have a virtual classroom that you can join, um, that you can watch all of these looks from. And this haircut is inspired by the very last haircut from the short series. So the fourth haircut from the short series. We call that S4 for short, but that's um, the haircut that I'm inspired by when I'm doing this. So I hope that answers your question, Gina. Um, it just, I'm pointing into it. So it's just a little bit looser than maybe um, I do it on my classroom. Can you tell us about um, maybe some tips for the consultation process if you have a client who has long hair and wants to go short? Yeah, I think um, the question is if you have a client that's got long hair and wants to go short, sometimes that can be a little bit intimidating. Um, personally for me, that's kind of what I'm living for. You know, that's what I'm in the industry for. I cannot wait to get that client to the backwash as quickly as possible. I want to cut that first section in and then she can't get away from it. You know what I mean? She's doing it. <laughs> so for, for me, that's a really exciting thing. But I do know that sometimes it can be an intimidating situation for hairdressers. I think the biggest thing in the consultation is you need to be excited, right? A client needs you to be brave for them and you also need to just show some passion and be like, wow, this is going to be amazing because they might be a little bit nervous. So you have to kind of settle them down. If you're nervous as well, you're creating this whole kind of nervous vibe going on. Um, you know, it's not going to be a great experience for them. So I think be brave, even if you don't necessarily feel that brave, that's what a client needs from you. They really, really need you to um, kind of, you know, hold their hand through it. Also, one of the biggest things is, like I said, in that head position, uh, feeling the head, feeling the bone structure, and make sure you're making those correct decisions and making it suitable for the client. So normally I do this side and then I'll go to the other side. Um, so I'm gonna come around here now and just turn around through there. We have a question yes. from Karen. Yes, where, hi there. Where can we find your website and your streaming education? Um, thank you for your question. It's gonna be sallyrogerson.com, S-A-L-L-Y-R-O-G-E-R-S-O-N. Dot com. Then you can click on the virtual classroom and that will take you through to the virtual classroom. You can sign up. Um, it's a very competitive price. It's like $24.99 a month. Um, and, you know, we just do a lot of live stuff as well. There is the original uh, comprehensive cutting program up there. We're going to have the men's program up there in about two or three weeks as well. That's coming. Um, and we also do live demonstrations every Sunday night. Um, so that's something to join. It is recorded, so you can go back and look at them afterwards if you're busy. Because obviously you'll be at the Vegas show on Sunday night, so you won't have time to get on that, you know? <laughs> um, we are going to be uh, posting live from the Vegas show as well on Sunday night, so please keep your eyes peeled. If you look on my Instagram, Sally Rogerson, and my Facebook, um, you can kind of check out what we're up to. We're probably not going to be able to do the full show, but, you know, we'll try and dip in and out. And we'll be posting the links later after our broadcast so that you can find them easily. Cool. So I'm just going through into the sides. Now on this side, because I'm right-handed, I'm actually standing in the front, but it's totally up to you. You can keep staying in the back. What I think is important though, is it's important to still do the same hand and body position. So I'm cutting over my fingers 
I tend to cut over my fingers a little bit more when I am layering. So let me come over here for you and you can see a bit better. So when I'm layering, I tend to go over my fingers as much as I can. Sometimes it's impossible, but when you're layering, you tend to lift hair up and layering is a removal of weight. So that makes sense. Uh, I tend to work palm to palm when I'm graduating or doing a line and that's when you pull head down. So it makes sense that you do the correct body position for the correct technique that you are using. I think what I personally do not like is I do not like using over the fingers on one side and then palm to palm on the other side. You can't switch it round because you will have an imbalance because your tension in your fingers is different. So now I'm just working bottom up. It's easier on my back, pointing in, keeping it quite loose. I tend to like a little bit of a mixture of my um, techniques. If I'm working on a client, I like to do some, probably about 80% I like to do precision. And then I definitely like to do some freehand afterwards at the end. To me, that's a really good mixture of um, techniques, you know. I'm also very open to what people do. If you want to use my program to cut hair and you want to use a razor at the end or you want to use some thinning shears, be my guest, you know. I'm not, I'm never, ever, ever saying this is the only way to cut hair. There's a million ways to cut hair. You can cut it with your feet if you want to. I don't mind. But as long as you do a good job, that's all that matters, right? So as long as you understand what you're doing, you have a passion. So all I'm trying to do is give people simple and easy and quick sectioning patterns. The kind of finishing work that you want to do is definitely a little bit more up to you going to take a little bit more out of here. I over directed maybe a little bit more on this side so I'll just go back through and check it in. We are all over America doing classes every weekend so um, if you want to join us you can also go and see where our classes are. We post a lot on Instagram our classes are new ones and then a big new thing that we do a lot of is I train people how to teach. So we have a salon training program that you can use for your assistants. And then I also have a teacher training mentor program. And for those just tuning in, you also have an event coming up this weekend in Las Vegas. Yes, absolutely. We're gonna be in Vegas this weekend, Sunday and Monday, doing amazing classes and a hair show. So if you're close, and you fancy coming down to join us, go to sallyrogerson.com. You can see all of the different classes. We have men's classes. We have um, all sorts of uh, disconnection and creative classes, um, fading classes. I mean, we're really kind of covering a lot of stuff. We also have social media and marketing classes. We have some really great editorial guests and color, color guests as well. Okay, so going into the back now, I'm still not going to cut my triangle, so I'm going to take that hair and get it out of the way. That's the most important thing. That wasn't good. Let me go there. Okay. Now the back area, depending on what their head shape is like, I'm either going to go with more curved sections or I'm going to go with more straight sections. If you go with more straight sections, then it's going to be flatter. If you go with more curved sections, you're going to get more of a head hugging shape. So I'm going to start on this side. I'm not going to connect this and this necessarily, but I am going to connect it internally. So what I'm going to do is just comb that hair out of the way because I definitely want to keep some of that softness later on. And now I'm going to go into a curved section. Regularly, most of our sections are either vertical, diagonal, or horizontal, but I really love working with curved sections because the hair actually pushes around the section and curves and hugs the head shape. 
much like material does if you're cutting cloth for a garment and you cut like almost a bit bias cutting you know so I'm doing like a curved section what I'm doing here is lifting this hair up to the top I'm gonna have to go a bit more palm to palm now because the only way I can get in I'm going to take my guide from that top area lift this hair up because I have to make sure I find my guide correctly then I'm going to start to walk around this is a big body position haircut I'm going to walk all the way around this curve so all the way around I'm not stopping I have to move all the way around this and we have a question yes why curved so a curved section the hair is going to push around the section and it's going to give a much more curved head shape which is a little bit more flattering and uh, very very feminine looking so I'm going to start back here again so I'm going to come up to the top so if you have someone with a really beautiful head shape it's not really an issue but you know we definitely get clients in the salon that have a wider flatter head and they still want to have a short little pixie haircut so you have to be able to uh, put a shape in for them and a curved section is if I comb it down and show you you really do get like this head hug that you don't get through other sections it's just my thing I like curvy sections they're not particularly easy to cut because everything you're using is straight I've got a straight comb, I've got straight fingers, I've got straight scissors. So to cut a curve in, it's kind of a lot of work. You have to cut all the increments of a curve, if that makes sense. And would you do the curve on all clients, or would you change it up depending on their... No, I could do straight sections and come around, like vertical sections. If someone had a very curvy head shape already, they don't really need any help. Do you know what I mean? They've already got a curvy head shape. But on your clients with flatter heads, a more curvy section is going to help them. To be honest with you, Noel doesn't really need it, but I wanted to share it with you and show you because she already has a real pretty head shape. But I think um, it's nice to talk about and share with you because it solves problems for you when you're dealing with your clients in the salon. Lee says, would you cross check with a curve? Yes, absolutely. Very good question. Thank you. I see so many people cross-checking with a straight finger, but they did a rounded or a curved shape in some capacity. And so you'll always feel like, oh, I cut it wrong. Um, but in reality, if I've cut more of a curve in here and I'm going around the head, when I cross-check, I need to cross-check over my fingers and I need to not keep my fingers straight. I need to curve my fingers to make sure I'm seeing the correct thing. Thank you for your question. That was a really great question. Who was that? Lee. All right, I'm continuing on. Some clients you do not want to really graduate. They, they want to remove weight. They want to keep it more layered. So I'm just going to end up slightly across. I'll probably take one more section, go slightly across, and then I'll start on the other side. On my virtual classroom, I tend to cut this a little bit more um, uh, precision-based. But as I said, I do know Noel's texture, and I know what it's going to do. It tends to poof out, so I am cutting it looser because of that. Could you also use the curve on longer hair, or is this just something for short hair? Very great question. You can absolutely use this curved section on longer hair. It works very, very well. Obviously, as the hair gets longer, gravity pulls it down, so it cannot do as much, but it does still give you a very, very nice, more curved head shape, for sure. Okay, so this is kind of where I'm at. I haven't done my outlines yet, 
because I want to keep them really pretty and loose and a um, little bit textured. I do think that the outline really dictates what kind of image you're going to do on a short haired client. Some clients want that little edge of femininity. You know, you hear it a lot in the salon where they say, I don't want to look like a boy, you know? Um, so for some reason in people's heads, that softness makes them feel a little bit more feminine. So be aware of those words that people are saying in the consultation, what kind of finish do they want? Are they saying, I want it to be really clean in my name? If they are, you need to be sitting that hair in and you know making it cleaner in the outlines. I'm now gonna come to this side. On this side, I am right-handed, so I just wanna share with you how I'm going to cut this side. And on this side, I cut bottom to top because I wanna try and cut that curve. If I cut from the top down, I'm cutting into the hair, if that makes sense. So, um, I'm sorry, I've got to put this chair down. Okay. Wonderful. So now I'm going to go bottom up on this side. Uh, I'll just lean you that way, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to start down here. And you will definitely find you will have to, the only way you can do this is, well for me, because I'm shorter, I have to go over my fingers. Did you see I had to turn my finger around? Because I can't lift on my shoulder. So I can't keep lifting here, because it hurts me. So I started there, and then I had to turn around. So some body position on short hair is kind of, you know, you have to find a position where you're not hurting your back, etc. So I'm curving my section, I'm starting at the bottom this time and I'm turning my hand around when my shoulder says ow, ow, got to turn my fingers around now, off I go up to the top. <laughs> I was up in Sonoma. Um, yesterday and Sunday teaching a class up there in a really beautiful salon called Spruce and um, just drove back last night so I definitely have to be aware of my hand and body position because I'm feeling it when I go palm to palm up there for sure. <laughs> Got to look after these old bones you know it's very important to make sure you're looking after your body. You want to be able to do this amazing procession, uh, profession for as long as possible. And uh, you have to be aware of not hurting yourself. It's a very physically challenging profession. So again, I'm working from this bottom area and pointing. You know, honestly, I'm not, uh, too worried about how super, super, super precision based it is. I'm trying to still keep some short and long pieces on purpose so it looks a bit more raw, but I'm still following my correct technique. It's not just random pointing into hair, you know, there's a method behind it. What would you do if you had a client who requested a short haircut, but the haircut that you requested, and this happens with a lot of stylists who say people request celebrity hairstyles, yes. might not work with them? Yes. How would, would you handle that? Very good question. You know, some people bring in a picture of um, Cindy Crawford, you know what I mean? And they expect to leave looking like Cindy Crawford. That's always kind of tricky. <laughs> But the thing is, what you have to do is you have to decipher from that image what is it that they liked about it. Honestly, sometimes it's just the fringe. Sometimes it's just like, oh, I really like the sides or I like that one piece of hair. Do you know what I mean? So you have to really decipher what is it that they love about it. I always think about a consultation as being an opportunity to you know, give a client uh, advice and tell them how they are going to look the best. And one of the most important things I think is in the consultation 
is to listen to that client. So I will let that client come in, I'll let them talk about this look, why they like it, all of that good stuff, and really, really listen to them. It does not, however, mean I'm going to do it. But I do find that if I listen to someone and they get the opportunity to talk it out and let it out, they will then, in return, listen to my opinion. And so it's an exchange of ideas. Okay, there's some great stuff in there. I really like some of that. Can I kind of add in what I think is going to make it special for you? How is this going to work for you and really show off your um, really great features like your eyes and your cheekbones, you know? So that's what I tend to do is make sure they feel listened to, but then I'm going to offer advice on what I think would be better for them or how are we going to change it to make it look right for them. Honestly, um, if you watch politicians on TV and uh, you look at how they deflect and turn the conversation around and start talking about something that they came on to actually talk about, that's kind of what a consultation's like. Someone will come in, show me something, before they know it, I'm talking about something else completely different and they've forgotten about the first thing. So you're kind of just trying to really focus on the positive things about the client. And ultimately, I want to do the right thing for the client. I'm not trying to be their friend, they're paying me. And it's my job to tell them in a nice way what is going to be best for them. How are they going to look the best that they can look? So I'm cross-checking over my fingers. Obviously, I'm not seeing a super clean line because I did point into it. But I am looking at beveling anything really cornery. I tend to cross-check over the fingers and over the head when I'm doing any kind of... Um, shorter haircut because if I cross check palm to palm I'm going to put lines in there excuse me got a lot of hair to get through I appreciate all of you tuning in and your patience with everything and again if you're just tuning in we're here with Sally Rogerson and she's showing us a Michelle Williams inspired haircut can you uh, remind us what you've done so far yes absolutely we are a really good point to review and just uh, regroup for a second. So to start with on this haircut, I started in the top area. I actually worked around the head, choosing the correct length for the texture. I want it to stand up a little bit, but I don't want it to stand straight up. So the key thing here is to make sure that this works. I started in the top because I wanted to get that right first. From that top area, I then worked into the sides and pivoted around using the top as a guideline. I also brought my fingertips out because I want to keep some softness and pieciness through here. I also isolated a triangle in that crown area because I'm going to deal with that in a moment. That's where she's flatter. That's where the hair springs a little bit more. As I went into this back area, I worked on more curved sections. This is going to give me a more curvy, head-hugging, feminine kind of feel. You can also see that I've left all of the outlines out. And also, weirdly for me, because I'm a precision-based cutter, I point cut everything, and that was mainly a decision based on um, texture and density more than anything. Because you know, the hair has been lightened, it is wavy, it's very coarse, so I wanted to, um, you know, encourage that texture and keep some of that texture, so that's why I've pointed into it. So that's kind of where we're at right now. I'm going to go into this triangle. This triangle is what I left out. And the reason I left this triangle out is because this is where she's flatter, this is where the madness happens, through here. So I have to make sure that I don't cut it too short in there. It's about the profile. I've got to make sure that I build something here to make it look really, really suitable. So that's why I've left it out. 
If someone's got a really crazy crown, then sometimes I'll even just do it completely freehand at the end. But for me right now, I'm going to connect it into this top area. So I cut my top on a flat layer and I'm going to lift that triangle up to the top and continue it through. In the back, however, it can disconnect and it can fall over the top and that will allow for the spring of the crown later on. So let me just show you that. I'm gonna lift this up and you can see that hair from the triangle here. This is my original cutting line from the top. So I'm just gonna check that in, keeping it quite loose still. The back, however, I am not going to check it into the back. So I'm going to leave some hair here, which will help me to develop my profile later on. So I'm coming through my triangle and just checking in anything that's left. It's usually only like that middle section, unless you're actually cutting some, someone's hair off from super long. Yeah, so I'm just checking if it all kind of works in. Okay, so all I'm gonna do now is actually start to work on some freehand and really uh, start to do my outline work as well. I've let this hair dry as I've gone along, so I like to kind of cut it from wet to dry sometimes. Just bear with me a second. Whew. Okay, we're back in. So, um, if any of you actually Go, uh, have followed us from the very beginning. This is one of our very first um, shoots that we did a few years ago. And uh, guess who this is? So um, that's really, really cool. I thought I'd bring it in just to show Noel, just so she can see what she used to look like with pink hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny because she just looks great with any hair dark, long, short. You're just so super lucky. You really suit everything, you know? Okay, so we're gonna go into our outlines now. Now, as you get into this top texture and you get into the outlines, you've really gotta think about the suitability. Right now, I really like uh, the shape of it here. I quite like some of this stuff. It's starting to look a little bit 60s, and it also looks a little bit like a Marc Jacobs wig from like uh, 2013 or something. I don't know if anyone remembers that wig that he did with really short crown and like those long tendrils. Uh, but so I like some of this. I also know that we want to have some hair that we can tuck around and play around with. And it also works within this hair density to keep it soft. But it's probably just a bit too much right now because from the profile, this is too wide through here. We're not seeing her eyes and her beautiful cheekbones. So if I just take that back a little bit, you can see that that's way more attractive. This space here is really great on a lot of women's bone structures. So why would we cover it up? That's crazy. You'd open that up and you'd leave a bit more length through there. So what I'm going to do now is start to go through and do some freehand. I like to comb that hair down, just tap it and see where it wants to break naturally and just push that hair away. I don't really care about sectioning it really hard. I'm just more interested in where does it want to sit. So now I'm gonna come through and just very gently slice through and take some of that uh, area out. I don't need that corner. So I can come through in many different ways. I can either slice more on the surface. I can also turn my blade around and slice more vertically, and that'll get deeper into the hair. Just gotta get up a bit. The old backs, you know. <laughs> so I can also use the tips of my scissors and just kind of stroke the hair that way. So these are really a lot of different effects. A lot of people say to me, you know, do I use any other equipment? Do I use a razor? Do I use, you know, um, I don't know those hot tools, whatever it is, but I personally just use my technique 
and I honestly just need one pair of scissors and I just use what's kind of in my head really and I use my eyes to just decide what I want to do. Um, again, I have no problem with anyone that uses anything else. This is just how I feel. Uh, I enjoy cutting just with one scissor really. So I'm working through, I've opened that up a little bit. Now over the ear is always tricky. I don't want to cut it out over the ear. Um, if you want to go shorter but you want to leave some softness, here's a little trick that I tend to use. I'll comb the hair over the ear, tap it, see where it wants to break and then you always get that funny bit in the middle that wants to stick out over the ear and you don't know whether it should sit forward or backwards. So I'm going to tap that down until it naturally breaks through over the ear area. Just push that hair out of the way and then it's this area that's the, the problem, especially on shorter hair. So I'm going to take a super, 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 super fine section. You have to just kind of hold it with your finger and um, you can either do it freehand or you can just go in and kind of cut it off. The client doesn't know but it just creates a little bit of a better shape because you don't have that one piece that's sprouting over the top. You've created like a little place for it to live. So that's what I tend to do around the ear. And then obviously through this outline through here, you're trying to decide, is this client a client that wants this soft PC look? I could carve a line in, I could do a million different things. As I said, I'm trying to keep this a little bit more of a looser feeling. So I'm slicing, opening and closing my scissor. I'm not just using one blade, I'm actually opening and closing and cutting the hair. Uh, down here you could be also using a razor for sure, you know, whatever floats your boat. I'm just letting this dry as I go along as well. Now. I tend to like this kind of dressed a bit more behind the ear if we're going for more of that red carpet kind of feeling. But, um, you know, a lot of clients want to have the choice of how much hair to put forward, whether to tuck it all back and make it look like a short haircut. You know, they want some choice with, with their hair. All right, coming around onto the other side, working the same kind of concept and idea push that hair out of the way. Again, I'm just letting it dry. Um, this is not the kind of hair density that you want to start putting a brush into. It's definitely um, much better when it dries naturally. Again, I'm going to tap around that ear, see what's not deciding to go forward or backwards. Take a micro section and just sneak that down. I'm not going to ask the client's permission for that. Hey, can I cut like that piece of hair completely off to the bone? They might not say yes. You just have to do it. If you think, if you think that that's going to work best for them and it's going to be suitable, then hopefully they trust your judgment to do it. Back to your consultation. If you feel passionate about something, whether it's passionately that the client should not have the style that they've brought in, or whether it's passionately that they should, you just got to share it. How exciting for a client when they come in and their hairstylist is, you know, really into cutting their hair or coloring their hair. How great does that make someone feel? If it's like, oh, hi, how you doing, you know? ho-hum. Like, why would a client come to you? You've got to share your passion, you've got to show how much you're into it, which is a lot of work, by the way, and I totally get that. I'm coming through into the front area, um, and then, for me personally, I want to keep some of this so that we can wear it a bit more across, but it is definitely, you know, it's a little bit kind of wavy around there. So I'm going to come in and I think what I'll do is just start to slice it a bit more across. So I'll come across this way, opening and closing my scissor. 
Just trying to break it up. It's a bit too regular around there. And then I'll also come back the other way on this side and go this direction. So more directional slicing. I'm going to just blast it real quick. And then um, as I kind of let the hair dry a little bit, I'm going to also twist the hair. So I'm going to twist it. I can open and close and just take a bit of weight out, almost like a back comb, but I'm actually opening and closing my scissor. This is gonna take some density out from that root. And it's usually this area that's kind of real heavy. If you want to also do uh, take off length, you could also go up and remove length as well. This is what I'm going to be doing in the crown. So I'm kind of deciding how much of this I want to connect or not. Definitely using your mirrors as much as possible on this visually. So I would say I'm probably going a little bit more into that uh, more textured Michelle Williams kind of twiggy-ish feeling. Um, if you're doing more of that longer top feeling, then you can definitely take more of a strong parting and leave that front area a little bit longer and flatter. Okay, just kind of working with the hair, having a little look at what it looks like, suitability. What do I want to keep? What do I want to take away? And I'm going to just kind of finger dry it. All I'm putting in is a little bit of uh, relaxing fluid in there just to smooth it down. Any kind of serum or relaxing fluid or that kind of thing just to control that hair. It's coarser hair that needs just a little bit of um, smoothing, that kind of thing. So I'm not interested in dressing the hair right now. All I'm doing is sealing the cuticle and smoothing it down a little bit. Do you have any favorite products? Great question. I do have um, favorite products. Uh, I do work a little bit with Davines right now. I have a, a really great relationship with them. So I definitely work with a lot of their um, styling products in the more inside. But... Honestly, one of the biggest things that I enjoy working with is a little bit of um, conditioner from the backwash. That's like my favorite thing, or like men's grooming uh, conditioner. Leaving conditioner, you know, I really like that on these kind of looks. I'm using a dressing brush, that's all, uh, this kind of thing. And uh, all I'm doing is smoothing that texture down. And then I could also add some shine on there. As I said, this kind of density and texture is not something I want to necessarily start, you know, round brushing or anything like that. It's going to go very kind of big. So if you want to make it a bit more sleek, definitely if you're doing more red carpet hair, that kind of stuff, um, awards shows, you tend to go sometimes into more of a finish. So I'm just getting that cuticle down, I'm just controlling it, using the tips of the brush, smoothing it down through there, and then I'll kind of re-mess it up. But the key thing here with this kind of hair, texture and density is you've got to brush it or comb it because you want to seal that cuticle down. I 
and Michelle Williams is up for an Oscar this weekend, so it's a great look to create for your client. And if you do recreate the look, um, be sure to tag SR Education. Oh, and yeah. Launch that so we can see it. I would love to see that. That would be beautiful. And then kind of elegantly tousled is the thing. You know, it's not just doing its own thing. I'm kind of placing it. That's why I like to use this brush sometimes a little bit because you can just lift it where you want to. And then all I would do here is honestly I would either use my fingers to dry it or I would also use like a diffuser to dry it not because I want it curly just because I want to just dry it undisturbed so all I would do is put like a diffuser bag on there um, you know, you can also use more of a grooming brush, something like that as well. Sorry guys. My hands are slippy. <laughs> okay. So I'm not going to do like a lot of blow drying here, but I'm just going to show you what I would do. I would tend to use my hands a little bit more. I'd use the palms of my hands and I would simply smooth my hands over there to seal the cuticle, mainly because this is more of a coarse texture and it tends to go rawr, like that. Okay guys, so um, it's nearly dry. I don't want to spend, you know, too, too, too long doing a long blow dry for you guys when you're watching because I can't um, show you anything else. But this is my little bit of a Michelle Williams inspired uh, haircut. I used the S4 haircut or technique rather from my women's comprehensive cutting program. You can find that all on sallyrogerson.com and uh, I hope you like it. I just really worked with a layer technique, creating some texture on the top. It can be worn a lot more textured and loose and I'll probably loosen it up and take a few still shots as well for you guys. So maybe check back in, we'll post some, some more looser textured ones as well. 
We have another question before yes. we finish up. Where can you get the attachment that you put on the blow dryer? This is um, YS Park. It's a, it's a diffuser bag and um, it's pretty amazing because you can just stick it in your bag, you know? There's bigger ones and little ones. So it's YS Park and, um, you know, we have them. We sell them at all of our classes. I'm sure you can just go online uh, otherwise and get something. What YS Park is the brand. Well, thank you for tuning in, guys. That is our Michelle Williams inspired haircut. If you'd like to see more about education from Sally Rogerson, visit her website, sallyrogerson.com. She has an event coming up in Las Vegas that you could check out. And we will see you soon for our Oscars recreations next week. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope you really enjoyed it. I enjoyed cutting hair for you. And I uh, hope to see you soon in class or in Vegas. Thank you so much. Bye.